Hey y'all, welcome back to New Ones Nonsense. Uh, we're not experts or anything, but we just like talking. This is your co-host Alex. And I'm the other co-host Ben, and I brought on two of my good friends, Fronrich and Alex. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Fronrich. I am a sophomore at UT. I'm a computer science major, and I'm also a minor <coughs> in philosophy of law. I'm Alex. I'm a senior nursing student at UT. Anything else? <laughs> uh, nursing kind of takes up all your time, so you can't really double major or minor. So. Okay, that's fair, that's fair. Wait, does nursing track, like, are you allowed to minor? Well, the thing is... Is like, it always BS? Yeah, like, with nursing, the oh. class schedules are really wonky, because Monday and Tuesday, you're in the hospital pretty much all day, so you can't really schedule other classes Not or that. minors or certificates. Oh. So it's like, in theory, you can, but in actuality, you probably can't. Yeah, like, like they won't <laughs> say no, but you can't really schedule classes, that makes so it's basically impossible okay you need to have those one week three hour classes <laughs> oh oof. do you know what i'm talking about yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah before we get into it too much we have our sponsor absence apparel they make very simplistic subtle asian trait themed designs so if you like these types of shirts and they're also they feel really nice too so go check them out at absence apparel and hopefully the founder comes on the podcast at some point i'm looking out for him but anyway uh, we start off with this question for every guest. How has college been for you so far? And like name some like highs and lows, like regrets, things you're proud of. Just go for it. Um, regret my major. Uh, <laughs> okay, just kidding. No, just kidding. I, I do like computer science, but it does get tedious sometimes. Like There's so much work. Uh, my minor, though, philosophy of law, I'm really interested in. And uh, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to bringing that up later on in this podcast. What about like in your college experience? How's that um, been? It's been a wild ride. Uh, I've, I've done, I guess, I've done a lot in college. Um, it's definitely different from high school. You get to hang out with your friends way more than you do in high school because, you know, you're, like, right next to each other. Uh, class life is kind of different, too. You're not going to class for, like, seven or eight hours a day, which is nice. Um, outside of that, though, I'm, I make music. Uh, yeah. Would you like to plug it? Uh, sure. Um, go follow me on SoundCloud at... P I I N G, I do R and B. Okay. Yeah. You sing as well. Like yeah, yeah, produce. I sing and produce. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you sing and he does yeah. it all. Yeah. Dude. Wait, for some reason I thought you were a rapper. <laughs> I, I can do that too, I guess. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a really SoundCloud rapper. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are you trying to make our intro song for us? <laughs> maybe. maybe. Ooh, when's your next album gonna drop? Uh, my first one already did. If y'all want to check it out. <laughs> oh yeah, what is it called? What is it called? It's called Post Pathos. It's about um, it's about examining uh, pathos, basically post uh, post an event occurring. So basically hindsight. Uh, that's that's what it's about. Yeah. All right. What about you? How's college been? Uh, so I came to college <laughs> from like still being my I guess socially awkward shut in self. And he said hikikomori. <laughs> I'm a knee. <laughs> and that didn't really change until junior year when I uh, <coughs> just kind of forced myself to branch out more. So I don't think the time I spent in the, my first two years of college were a negative, but I think I could have spent them in a better way. Mm. What about the two years following that? Uh, so like last year and this year? Yeah. So I came to college a psychology major, then I switched to chemistry, then I switched into nursing. Good. So I guess I upgraded in a way, but in a way I also, I guess, stuck myself in the nursing track and I can't get out now. <laughs> Just for better or for worse, I don't know yet. Are you graduating this May or do you have to graduate later? I'm graduating winter 2020, <coughs> so I'm taking one extra semester. Mm. Yeah. What for? Or is it just like that's the, the norm for a nursing track? Uh, yeah, because like nursing, all their classes are it's sort of grouped pre together. Yeah, so you can't really skip ahead. Or, oh. Yeah, so if you transfer in, you're kind of stuck behind a little bit. So. Oh, wait, did you transfer in? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he yeah. just said he started off with psychology. From psych to chemistry. Oh, for There's some reason, I thought of transfer as like transfer from a different university. Oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Whoops. Started at Jester my freshman year. That oh, was a horrible geez. story. Wait, it's not horrible. You're just flaming. Jester has nice. no hot water. What? Okay, at so, all. seventh floor up, that's true. But. Like, I was on the 12th floor. I had to go like 4 a.m. for showers, and I had a chance of hot water then, but 
Or you could just go to like your homie downstairs and just like, shower in their room. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Or they're private. That would be even better. That's true. Like you could have done that. Mm. Some friends of mine, they would do that. They're like, yo, let me use your private bath because mine sucks ass. <laughs> yeah, and you're not paying utilities, so like might as well. Yeah. You're paying 10k a year instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your your, your oh, utilities are like shoved in somewhere. Yeah. 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 Uh, I guess. I guess post. Or junior year, senior year, it's been better. I've been branching out more. I feel like I've learned more about <coughs> how people live in college. Because sophomore, freshman year, I was pretty much in a bubble and I didn't really interact with that many people. And I feel like I've just gotten a bigger worldview on how people spend their time, how they think. So you think that's like a positive? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like getting to know how people think is. Or getting to experience new things is one of the big things that I got out of college. Okay, that's good. So a softball question that my friend asked me not long ago that I really liked was, what is a habit of yours that you constantly do that you think is like indicative of your personality as of a large? Um, I, I guess I can be the first to answer that. Uh, what I would say is maybe not a habit of my own, but something I notice in a lot of people is how much they talk about their major. Um, and in what way they talk about their major, right? Uh, because even though even though your major necessarily isn't a big part of your personality, um, it shows that you're either it, your major is something you're either passionate about, something that's going to make lots of money, or or something you're doing because your parents told you to. Uh, so <laughs> depending on how you talk about your major, I think that says a lot about um, you as a person. Uh, for example, like. I'm I'm all right with computer science. I'm not like I'm not super into it. I, I went into it basically because I played lots of Minecraft and was like I want to make mods for a living. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no true story. This guy's uh, so seriously, but we're just like. <laughs> and yeah, I think it's yeah, funnier no. because Minecraft is re really blowing up right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, continue. Yeah, but th that that that's my point exactly. Like. I, I came into it thinking I'd be passionate about it, but now I, uh, after after like all the course load and stuff, it's <coughs> I don't know, it's a it's a bit rough. Is, is it different from what you expected? Well, yeah. yeah, he expected to make Minecraft I, mods. I, I was expecting <laughs> Minecraft mods. I got operating <laughs> systems and low level computer architecture. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm a CS major as well, so I kind of relate to writing into those two courses, and you just like. Oh wait, oh. you expecting Minecraft mods? No, <laughs> I think I just expected things to be uh, not just easier, you know. Yeah, yeah. Wait, not so how good. did you um how did you feel about OS? Like on a side note, I hated it. It's the worst semester of my life. Okay, it was okay. Morale low. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. He says it so. He says it so matter of fact. I said it. I was very blunt that I I thought about it a lot. You know, I think, right. um, cause like. Low level stuff is hard to conceptualize, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you're in the first two CS Definitely. courses, or when you imagine what something you <coughs> does, you you imagine you're solving a problem that like that people like deal with, yeah. And then like it's easy to conceptualize, so it's easy, it's easier to program. But for all like OS and computer architecture stuff, it's so like it's so like working down with like kind of like just like the the actual machine yeah. and stuff like that that like it's just hard to understand. And for me, I like I like to visualize things a lot. Yeah. So if I can't visualize something, it's like it's hard for me to understand what I'm doing. If I don't understand what I'm doing, it's also gonna be hard to code. So it's just like, I didn't do super well in OS. Computer architecture at the time was kind of a joke, so I didn't learn anything, but I got the grade anyway. Okay. But I think that kind of bit me in OS, cause like you, the, the professor really cares about how much you learn, but I guess for me, I was still in that mindset of like, how can I get the best grade as I can? So. I neither got the grade I wanted, nor I also just got shafted. But <laughs> I think it's just like it was just hard because like self esteem wise, I wasn't doing super well because like I just wasn't doing well in the class. Oh, but, yeah. that makes sense. Uh -huh. yeah. That was a long winded way of saying it just wasn't wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's how you know he thought about it See, yeah. and it was that, nuanced. That also like is a reflection of his personality, right? Because he was just talking about like how he's a visual learner as opposed to someone who can think of abstract thoughts the way that architecture and OS make you think so mm -hmm. I don't know bro oh, yeah yeah, yeah. nice way to go back to the question yeah oh gosh what about you uh, so uh, <coughs> that's that one of the traits that I've 
thought of myself as being. Is he Kiko Mori? <laughs> kind of, kind of, yeah. Like I, I have a trend of thinking of like goals I want to achieve, but then never actually doing anything to achieve them. So it's more like daydreaming than goal setting. So. Or it's like you're setting goals that are too far away from you. Because I feel like I, I resonate with that. Yeah, like, I also resonate with that. I've like I one of my favorite I guess ways to spend my free time is playing volleyball, and I've always told myself like, oh, I should work out more so I can like play volleyball at a higher level but i end up just like taking naps and watching anime Good. <laughs> so i guess that sort of wishful thinking is more like a lack of commitment to myself and taking myself seriously because i because like in high school i ran track and i actually like can commit to something if i'm with other people but when it's with myself i struggle a lot because it's just so much easier to just sleep in or eat fast food instead of like eating healthy and working out. Have you heard of the idea of going on dates by yourself for like self like improvement? I have not. Like the idea behind it is that like you you don't you're trying to train yourself to think oh I don't need to do something because someone else is doing it I want to do it because I want to do it right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times people are strung along to doing something because their friends are doing it or like yada 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 is doing it but the problem is that like if you really want to do it that shouldn't be necessary. But a lot of people oh. find like the extra bit of like their friend going is the necessary linchpin. And so like the idea behind this is you're training yourself to be able to do things by yourself. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm just, just, I just curious if you've heard of it. Yeah. I've never heard yeah, of no, it. Yeah, no, I've never like, <laughs> A date with yourself. Yeah, dude, you go like table for one. <laughs> table for one. That's the, that's the big brain feeling. You're gonna take the movie seat by yourself. That's like the, uh, have you seen this like on the internet? It's like, Tell a sad story in four words. It's like table for one, please. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. But yeah, like unironically, it is. It supposedly helps you with like your self-esteem and being able to commit with things because like you're training yourself to just go out and do it by yourself as opposed to with right. people. Like you're being more sense. independent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, being more independent is like the goal here. Because I feel like a lot of us fall into the trap of like, I really want to do something, but then you like become very unsure of doing it once someone else is no longer doing it. That's true. Yeah, I wanted to go to this Wang Fu thing over the summer because I really like <coughs> oh, like Wong and Fu respect. Production. I really like and respect yeah. Wang Fu for what they've done for the Asian American community, but I didn't really want to go by myself for some reason. And then none of well, I think most of my friends like don't really care about that type mm -hmm. of stuff or they're like it's too expensive, so I just never right. went. And mm -hmm. then there was like a Tyler the Creator concert coming up, and I also oh. wanted to go because I was like. Yeah. I really like his music, but then nobody literally, no, none of my friends really listen to his music. So then I'm like, I'm not going. But then someone like asked me like, if you like him that much, shouldn't you just want to go by yourself? And I was like, Yeah, exactly. Like, that is a that's a good point. Yeah. So, yeah. I, f I feel like yeah, the the most like valuable things in your life are the things you're most intrinsically motivated to do. Mm -hmm. like, yes. Like you were saying, if if it doesn't come from you and you want to go somewhere just because everyone else is going there, you're you're just bandwagoning. Yeah. Um. So, even though y you might think you'll enjoy the experience more when there's people around you, but if you want to do something for you, just just go ahead and do it. Yeah. That's my take on it. Yeah. But yeah, back to the question. What about you? Like a habit of yours that is like indicative of your personality at large. Mm. I think what I do a lot is, I think I'm a pretty good talker. Like I'll, if I have a problem in my life when I'm thinking about something, like I can break down what I should be doing, what's happening right now. Like people are always like, oh Alex, like you really introspect a lot, right? But I'll never actually do any of the stuff I'm I'm saying. So, like, if. Kind of like kind of similar to what Alex was saying. Like I feel like oh I've, I've kind of been in the bubble. I haven't been going out much, and like like I remember telling you like hey I, I'll go to like this dance workshop. Like I'll go like learn how to dance. I can meet new people through that stuff like that. But I still haven't actually done it mainly because like even though like you know I know what to do. Like actually doing it is still kind of scary to me and like not having the courage or not like really understanding what that means to go do it is like <coughs> kind of a step that i just don't really take so i think yeah me me talking a lot kind of just shows like my personality is just like i like to think i'm really like self-aware and like i'm i can like do a lot of different stuff or have a lot of potential but i never actually do it mainly because like i don't really want to be committed to a lot of stuff mainly because i'm afraid of 
trying that new thing because like, when you try something new like you're inherently gonna <coughs> run to the risk of like failure but like I'm not ready for that I guess so that's why like I'm always like kind of halfway in to like solving my problem but not actually halfway in halfway out yeah mm. yep. how, how about you uh, the answer that I told the person that asked me just now was like I feel like you, you have that situation in your life where you run into someone you don't see for a while and you're not on bad terms with them so it's just like very neutral and you're yeah. like oh hey let's catch up sometime and then you just forget about it yeah like I never actually forget about those I just never say anything because I'm afraid that they forgot oh. and they'll think it's like unusual or like strange and so like I feel like that's really indicative of like my introspection because I feel like a lot of a lot of the reason why I don't forget is because I think about it. And so it, like, really encodes into my brain, and it makes it hard for me to, like, not, like, remember. So, like, would you ever take the initiative and reach out to them after you actually say, let's hang out? I have, but, like, for people I know less well, I'm, like, really hesitant to do it, because, like, I don't know what their opinion is of, opinion is of me. So mm -hmm. I, like, I, like, teeter around the edges a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Like, especially for people, like, I don't know as well. Like, even today, like, I ran into a friend that we have been meaning to catch up for a long time now, and every time we see each other, we're like, oh, yeah, let's catch up. And then we never actually did anything about it until today when I realized, like, hey, I should probably do something. And I was like, okay, let's set out a date and let's mm -hmm. catch up. So I guess I'm, like, kind of proactive, but not, like, necessarily as proactive as, a, as, as I'd like to be. That makes sense. Yeah. So... I, I, now that this question's over, it took a very long time to answer. Also, for the viewers, I'm pretty sick, so I don't know if my voice sounds different, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if that's occurring, now you know why. But anyway, to transition into another topic, we were talking about this prior. We wanted to talk about the trolley problem and like what everyone's oh, yeah. thoughts on it were. <laughs> so the trolley problem is like this is this train that has like an option of two tracks and you're standing at the lever where you can divert the track. And it's already set to the track where it's going to run over five people if you don't do anything. However, you're given the choice to change the track to run over one person. So then it's like, what do you do? Cool. What, um, what do you... Sure, I guess... Uh, <coughs> I, I guess I would approach this from a utilitarian standpoint. Oh or, my okay, for, for those of you who don't know what utilitarian is... a philosophy is, minder. It's, um... <laughs> yeah, philosophy. The thing is, I actually know what you're talking about. Okay, it's so okay. It's, um... Basically, you can uh, you can turn morality into a dichotomy of pleasure and pain. So, the more pleasure there is within a society, the better off the society is. So, we're trying to reduce pain as much as possible. Um, in the case of the trolley problem, I think there's there's two things you have to look at. If if these people are people that you do not know and like you're unaware of, of their identities then to a utilitarian, the obvious answer would be to run over the, the single person. Um, but at the same time, that, that, that does sound kind of stoic, I know. Uh, but at the same time, uh, let's, say, let's, say. let's say that the, uh, the one person was an infant, and then the five people were criminals. Now, now that, like, that changes the whole scenario. Uh, if you think about it in that way, sure, I guess you could like you would you would choose to let let's say the five people were like Hitler, Mussolini, Stalin, and then two other pretty bad people. Um, <laughs> oh Mao, sure. Oh, I forgot about him. <laughs> Mao, yeah, he's pretty bad. Free Hong Kong, <laughs> free Hong Kong, free Hong Kong. Free Hong Kong. Holy. Yeah, but um, if <coughs> if that were the case, then most people would probably choose to run over the five. Um, but that's just my take on it. It's it's not one where I could give you like a straightforward answer on what's right and what's wrong. But what about like you feel like what about like the guilt from like intentionally murdering someone? So that's like another aspect or layer to this problem is that right. like the train was already going to run over the five people if you did nothing, so you didn't play a part in that. But switching the track diverts it, and you intentionally did that, meaning you technically murdered the but one you person. did play a part. You did play a part. In, if you didn't switch the lever, you would still have played a part. There's there's two types of actions. There's action of commission and action of omission. Damn. If you if you act on commission, it means you're committing to do something. <coughs> the opposite of that is action of omission, which means you're committing to not do something. So whether or not I decide to pull the lever, 
the, the decision that I've made and the way I act upon it is going to be an action regardless. So me being there witnessing the event, I'm equally as guilty for the death of the one person as I would be for the death of the five people, whether or not I would have pulled the lever. Hmm. What about you guys? Uh, What's the take here? I think I would pull the lever to kill. If they're like all strangers and adults, like all things be equal, I'd probably pull the lever to run over one person over five. Just because, like with Von Rick saying, like more people have like, like one person dying is better than five people dying. So, yeah. Like, most good for the great and yeah, yeah. most of our people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I could also think of it as I chose to save five people instead of I chose to kill one person when I'm like in the post, like <coughs> after everything's yeah. done. So I'm not sure how, what kind of therapy I'd be in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, if it's like all strangers and I don't know anything about them, I'd probably go with pulling the lever. Okay, yeah, I think it depends on the context of the situation, like these two illustrated. Yeah. Um, she said illustrated. That's, that's a big word. That's big <laughs> um, so, like, yeah, if they, if I don't know any of them, <coughs> I think I also would factor in, like, maybe even the age, too. Like, not even just that they're criminals or not, but, like, if one's an infant or young kid and the other five more or life are, ahead of them? Uh, are, like, older, like, to me, maybe it would be more fair to give the infant, like, a chance to live because, like, he hasn't had much life to him yet. But, like, the other people are, like, they've already gone through a lot of life. They're already old. Like, it is cruel to say, but, like, they're already approaching the end of their life anyway. But I think that also depends on the situation, too. Like, I think it's hard to say, like, I don't think there's a really rule or system, like, I could really follow. Like, it would always have to be a case-by-case basis mainly because of how sensitive the topic is i guess it's just more like the lesser of two evils on top of that so you brought up something about age that I, so have you guys watched the anime called monster no i have not, I have not. no i've heard no. of it yeah. i haven't watched it but like i know the plot and like how yeah. it gets rolling yeah and like the beginning i don't know the end but like so the plot starts by like this really famous doctor is like he saves all these people he's like a neurosurgeon he's like dr strange Minus, like, the strange part. But, like... <laughs> so just a doctor. doctor. Yeah. <laughs> just a doctor. A really good doctor. Yeah. <clears throat> but, yeah. So he, like, saves a lot of people. And one day he's brought with, like, a really interesting, like, conundrum. Because he knows that there was, like, a, a bombing recently. And a kid is brought in. He has, like, a bullet in his brain. And if it's not removed fast enough, he's going to, like, face the effects of, like, lead poisoning and, like, all these other random things. And then <clears throat> his boss, who runs the hospital, tells him, hey... Give up on that case because I have someone more important that you need to save. And it's like this old like guy who's like I think part of the government. Mm -hmm. And so the doctor is like faced with a conundrum now. Should I listen to my boss or should I save this person that I'm already working to save, right? Mm -hmm. And so he chooses to say no to his boss because he's like, I don't care. Like that like this person has much more life ahead of them, right? And so he saves the kid and then he gets fired because his boss is like, What the fuck? you know? Right. And then after that, like I, there's like a time skip and that kid turns out to be a serial killer mm. like the most like one of the most notorious serial killers in this yeah. like fictional universe uh -huh. so it's like do you think it the like the result of the action factors into the action like retrospectively looking back on your actions I guess oh okay <laughs> like for example in this trolley problem if you save yeah. someone like an infant yeah. and they turn out to be the serial, serial killer. killer right yeah. um because that, in the end, resulted in more loss of life. That's mm -hmm. true. But I think at that point, the problem is out of your hands, right? Yeah. Because initially, uh, you made a decision based on what you valued, <coughs> you valued most. And like Alex was saying, what he values, at least like in the trolley situation, was age. Mm -hmm. And the potential for... Um, and the, 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 the Basically, the potential to... to do something with your life, right? The the child had more potential. And it was, I feel like the decision to become a serial, a serial killer was on the child. So you may feel guilty that you just saved a serial killer um, who murdered a bunch of people and caused more loss of life. But at the same time, 
can you really tell yourself that like you're to blame for that because at, at, at the time you were just deciding based on your personal value system mm -hmm. and i to me i think that's what matters not not like the guilt that you may feel in hindsight but uh the ends that you were trying to meet at the time you had to make the decision yeah I, I agree with what he's saying like you don't at the moment like you have no way of telling right like you don't necessarily know the background of these people or you or you could if you like they're like famous but at the end of the day it's just like um i think you did the best you could you could do like you're not god or anything so you're not gonna know what's gonna happen in the future so yeah i think kind of going back to what farmers was saying like i think it's good to like take a stand for like <coughs> what you believe and like what values you have so and even if they turn out like wrong i think it's okay to like just learn from what you made a mistake even if it was like a big mistake and like you kind of just learn from your experiences and move on from that and even then it's like it's hard to say if like like me or like a person saving like the baby was a mistake because like at the moment like you had no idea and it's just like there's many different paths like like there's many different possibilities something could happen when you're derived from like a decision right because like, you could still save the baby and the other events can happen and the baby turns out to not be a serial killer you know so i think if we examine it just like based on that decision like i don't think uh, of course assuming that you like your values is in that like potential like the potential of life i think that like regardless of what happens like you didn't necessarily make a mistake in that case yeah. interesting mm -hmm. so we were talking about this before me and alex and where there's a meme page called trolley problem meme page and, <laughs> and, I, and like it makes these like interesting variations on these trolley problems so like i have a couple queued up for you guys so one of them is called the veil of ignorance so now it puts like a question mark on every single person in this scenario so like you can either be the person pulling the lever the person on the upper track the person on the lower track or in the trolley and it's like would you still pull the lever not knowing where you would be in this situation but you must be in this situation um, so, it, depending on where I am, I, I can't. No, you you wouldn't you wouldn't know where you were in this situation. But would you want oh. the lever pulled? Okay. But you uh, must be in this situation somewhere. Yeah. Okay, knowing if I pull the lever, I go <coughs> like one person over five, right? Yeah. So you you um, could pull the lever, and you could be the one getting right, right over. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Um. Because you don't know where you are. Yeah. Honestly. I would I would still make the de the same decision even if it led to me getting run over, uh, because although <coughs> although I may or may not know whether I live, I will know that five people will have been saved if someone pulled the lever, and come once again coming from a utilitarian perspective, I I feel like like that would be the best course of action. It's like um, if you pull the lever, you have a one out of eight chance of dying. No, no, you aren't. You may not even be pulling the lever. Yeah. If, like if you were to pull the lever and you have a one out, of, then you have a one out of eight chance of dying because you'd be that one guy on the. I mean, track. you could also be on the trolley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. you have one out of eight chance of like getting ran over. But okay. Right. If you it choose not to pull the lever, then you have a, was it five out of eight? Because there's five people on the track that. The trolley would naturally run over. I get yeah, statistically so, speaking, yeah. you'd be more likely to die if you didn't pull the lever. It's like pulling the lever, probability wise, would be the best or most survival option. But is that is that like morally sound? I guess that's what this thing is I mean, trying I guess to get it depends at. Depends on his values, right? Yeah. Does he exactly. does he want to live? Like, is that, that does that take precedence over saving these other people? Yeah. Does yeah. one life take precedence over the value of five? Because like, I think it's yeah. easy to say like yes i value like, i want to save more lives when like you're personally not at stake here like you don't have anything to lose but when you do have something to lose then like i think that goes to show like what your real character and what your real values are you know right yeah and so now another variation to this problem i, I should, here we'll start with alex's time <laughs> okay so this one is now along now it's the top track is it's uh it's temporally displaced so like does like, does it being further away in time change your judgment? 
like someone gets ran over ten years later and stuff yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So yeah. you choose if you if you leave it, five people will be run over now. But if you don't, if you choose it, then they'll be that one person will be run over in ten years or like twenty years or something like that. Oh, Ooh, that's pretty hard. Mm. And like, does the amount of time change your decision? Well, so if they, if so, like in the original situation, I would pull the lever, and it would be instant. Yeah, yeah. it's instant. But in this <coughs> situation, they die like ten years or whatever. So. I think I'd still pull it because overall it's still only one person dying and the other five people still get to live. So either way, the five people on the track get to live, but it's whether like that person dies now or 10 years later. And I guess 10 years for one person is um, not, is less than 10 years like amongst five people, so 50 years worth of time. Mm. So, I'm not sure if I would, like, I think I'd prefer to kill them instantly, but I'd still rather pull the lever than have it run over five people. Yeah. Um, I guess a way I'd, I'd think probably more concretely of this would be uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Oh! Season 5, Rolling Stone. Oh! oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay, so... <laughs> For our, our viewers who, who haven't watched JoJo's Bizarre Adventures, I'll try to explain it without spoiling the, the anime. So basically, um, <coughs> there's this power in the anime which predicts uh, predicts your death and the way you're gonna die, um, and it's basically it's basically fate. So you can't change it, but you you can try as hard as you want to change it. Um, now with the trolley problem and, and the whole like temporal time the whole temporal track thing it's basically are are you willing to be the one to determine the fate of these people right because you could either kill five people instantly or have one person wait 10 years um and are they are they aware that they're going to die like do they know the train is coming they don't know but you know okay but mm. see I, so it's very similar to the rolling stone situation right, because right. like continue <clears throat> exactly it's like it becomes a problem of do you want to live with the guilt of knowing that you're going to kill someone 10 years later or like you're going to kill five people now uh oh, sorry uh you're morally right. speaking i was i was still do the same thing and, and kill the one person um because once again utilitarianism <laughs> but but uh now there's the whole guilt factor that plays in of like <coughs> being the one to to basically ruin this dude's life like what if what if this is some some college student he like cures cancer and i don't know phd uh, gets a nobel peace prize right and then 10 years later just wham or what if he's in the process of doing that and the time right. comes right mm -hmm. what if he was the one to, to cure cancer or to cure death i don't know cure um, death <laughs> yeah <laughs> sure death is a disease <laughs> <laughs> yeah but let's say he was that person and the amount of guilt knowing that <laughs> that you just delayed someone's death by 10 years but it was still inevitable is i don't know that's kind of crazy to me I, i'd still i'd still choose <coughs> to pull the lever though but you would just be wrapped with more guilt yeah a, a, a lot more guilt yeah um Immeasurably more. i think that takes my initial scenario with like age like more interesting too um because like what if those people were like already gonna like they're like what if they're dying of cancer already yeah and like like is the train really gonna the train isn't gonna change their fate you know so <coughs> i don't know i think for me it's like it also depends on the context like what do i superficially observe from like these people who are about to get run over and what judgment call would make because i think when you bring in time like temporal displacement then like then you plan for things and like well what might happen in the long term so i think if we're like taking the situation i explained earlier in the podcast and we're like, but we're now we're adding this condition i think i would still make the same decision yeah. <coughs> okay so another twist that exists in this one is now imagine the bottom track has no people it's a 
infinitesimally long, like infinitely long line of cows. How many cows would it have to be before you would switch to the killing a person? How many cows would have to be? Like, so for example, like, let's say there's like one cow and one person. You'd probably kill the cow, right? Yeah. How many cows would you have to put there and they would have to kill before you would want to kill one person first? What I would do would be to let the cows die and then sell beef. <laughs> <laughs> but what if they're not Angus cattle? I mean, people still eat meat no matter what, so... <laughs> I, I the cut won't be as good. Nah. Yeah, it'll be roadkill, but train kill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something gotta be oh, so I guess, okay, I guess in terms of this problem, right... So I watched the anime, The Promised Neverland, and yeah. <laughs> now I'm vegetarian. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't eaten meat for like six months. And um, I don't know. I was I was looking into like the arguments that vegetarians make for not eating meat. Mine is because I just I think of meat as people now, and like I'm scared to eat people. But but like the the ethical dilemma in eating meat is basically you're you're being speciesist in that. Right, you're valuing a human life over a cow uh, because you can empathize with a human more, or because you think the cow is like less intelligent and doesn't experience conscience. Um, but how are you so sure that everyone around you experiences conscience? Right, you don't know what it's like to be like them. So if I'm if I'm having to choose like one person over an infinite number of cows. I would probably just go with the one person. No, but like this is asking more along the lines of where where would you draw the line in, the line in the sand for you? What number of cows oh. about like estimate would it take for you to switch over to kill a person? I'd take a cow. One it's like cow. One cow. A and cow. Then, and then after that. <laughs> and then So two so, cows is more than one. Okay, person. wait, is it like an infinitely long line of people and an infinitely long no, line of No no no, of it's cows, just or? one person and like the cows can be however long it is. Like how many it's in, so the cows are infinite. Okay. They can be infinite. Can. Yeah. Okay. Like for example in Farmers, I think it might be two. Yeah. And then he would kill the person first. Oh, yeah. I would okay, if that's the case though, I would just kill the person right away. I I, I don't know, I just even if there was one cow. Oh, okay. If it's one cow, I would kill the cow. What, what about two cows? Two cows. That's, I'd kill the person. Because okay, okay, so, so that, that's that's his line. Yeah, I, this is line is two. Yeah, I would switch. Yeah, it. yeah sure. Um, for me, it's just the infinite cows. <laughs> like, I think exactly what he was saying, like about like empathy, like mm -hmm. that's probably why I would just pick the person because like, yes. Like I'm, all, I'm prioritize. I guess I'm being a species, and I'm prioritizing, like the human first. But I, f I don't see what's necessarily wrong with that. Mainly because, like, we are people, and like it's fine to look after like your own group, you know. So, and like, yeah, I'm not like a. I guess like, I do like recognize like yeah like these people like not these people these animals have life you know but i think and once again it's like it just goes back to what's the lesser of two evils and like i value human life more so that's why like i'm fine with that train running forever <laughs> over cows but also like i also eat meat so like yeah they're already they're probably already getting like brutally slaughtered like way worse mm -hmm. than the train yeah. running over them yeah. so like if anything like like that's not as bad, you know. For that scenario, though, does an infinite number make you worry that there will, it will make cows go extinct? But if there's how is there an infinite how, supply? You, yeah, how would there be an infinite yeah, supply? Oh, you're right. That's fair. Are you, are you saying, like, there's a, <coughs> there's a large amount of cows that's not necessarily infinite, but... You just, like, so kind of like, kind of like, what if you changed like, it? Because the original thing like, was how infinite. About, how about, like, natural gas? Like, there's a lot of natural gas, but it's not... An infinite amount. Yeah. That's why people are worried, right? But technically, we can we can still go through it for like the next hundred years before we actually feel the effects of not having it. Yeah. Yeah. So say in a similar situation, <clears throat> yeah, that's a lot harder. Um, <coughs> I mean, I think that even goes into a lot of questions now when like, you know, people will like take advantage of like human workers and stuff like that okay. for the sake of like getting these natural resources for the sake of comfort. So. Yeah, I think at a certain point, um, if I knew cows were gonna go extinct, then I probably would draw a line around like a hundred cows. <laughs> so, 
it would still be because I'm assuming that there are a lot of like there are a lot of cows, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. like like it's a, like a species like it's not an endangered species yet. So while that does sound like a lot, I would guess I would end up drawing the line mainly because for me at that point it becomes into a question of like how much do we depend on like comfort and how much do we depend on like like excess to I guess have an attainer standard of life. And I think at a certain point it's like we need to draw the line for that. So I think my decision to stop <laughs> killing all the cows isn't really for the cows. It's still for humans, but it's more like like we need to stop exhausting our resources because we think that we should have everything we want in life. If that makes any sense. It does. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Did you answer? Yeah, yeah. I said I'd start like selling meat. Oh. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah, there's a couple more that I have. Let me go find them really quick. Here, let's see. And if you guys know any, then feel free to bring it up. I just... Fuck, where did they go? Ah, oh, damn it. Like too many memes on your phone. You're right. <laughs> ACL was too exciting. ACL was too exciting, oh. he says. How'd you feel about ACL? It was good. <coughs> um, I think, yeah, kind of like most people when they go to like concerts and music festivals, they just want to go for like artists they know. Yeah. And like, and that was kind of me at first. Like, I didn't really know too many artists on Sunday except for like Stu Uzi. And like, I knew who Cardi B was, but like, I didn't really listen to her music. So. I think it was like I knew I had to come in like being open minded, but right. like it's hard to be open minded, right? But I think I did end up liking it because like the artist me and then like did end up like seeing like they were good artists and like it was like different music than like what we necessarily heard. Like Rosalia, we visited Rosalia, who's a Spanish artist. Oh, okay. And then we visited she was Shira, right. who was like just like the most one of the most low key. I don't know about low key, but she's like an artist that we haven't heard of before, but her, her songs were like pretty good. So I think it was just like. I liked it in that, like, I guess we kind of, I guess, like, we kind of went to see what a music festival's original tent was, which is, like, seeing a lot of different artists, discovering them, and, like, just keeping them in mind for the future. So, yeah. Okay, so one more. Suppose there are five invisible people on the bottom track. You cannot disprove that, do you, Pool? It's like, do I know that there's people there? You can't disprove it. You or can't, so you can't know that there are not people there. You're just like in a gray area where they might be there because they're invisible. You don't know that they're for sure there or not there. So there's no proof, but there's also no there's no, proof. Pr there's no proof that they're there, but there's also no proof <coughs> that they're not there either. Yeah. So it's like you can neither confirm nor deny that there's people on the bottom track. It, who's on the top track? The one, one person. person? But can you see that one person? You can see the one person. You can't see the five people on the bottom. Or it, there might not even be five people on the bottom. You just don't know. Yeah. That yeah. is a pretty difficult question. Actually, I mean, if you can't prove whether or not something exists, like those people on the track, uh, I feel like it would be safer to spare the lives of something that's contingent upon, like, something you don't even know of. Uh, it'd be better to spare the one, the one person's life. So in this case, I, would, I wouldn't flip the lever. I, I, like, I would may or may not murder the five people i guess because mm -hmm. you don't you don't know if they're there right and at, yeah. at that point it's not on you um because because I, the, adding the degree of uncertainty is is what makes this one hard uh so hmm, i don't i don't i can't think of a similar situation to relate this to mm -hmm. but um Think of like flipping a coin, right? And and uh, you know like Two Face from Batman, right? Oh, he Harvey the coin. Dent. Harvey Dent, exactly. He flips the coin, and at that point, uh, well, his background story is like you know he, he loses half his face, and then he loses his morality, so he uses the coin to make judgments. Is he really morally morally to blame for something he may or may not do, right? It's, it, it would be like me pulling the lever on the five people. A am I to blame for something I may or may not do if I, <coughs> if I wasn't conscious of the actions I was doing? So yeah, I'd, I'd kill the five people. Or mm -hmm. may or may not kill them. I, don't know. I would also yeah. go with kill the five people and save one person that I know exists. <clears throat> right. Because like, if someone I knew existed 
was gonna die and I had the option of like killing five people I don't even know exist, I would probably go and kill the five people. Like, um, like if Ben were to be like, be held at gunpoint and I have to push a button that kills like five random dudes in like India, <laughs> I, I, like I would push the button, like honestly, because uh, having someone that I know exists, like save versus having people I don't even like, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of, die is like probably the better option. <coughs> that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's hard for me. Um, I think I would, if it was already on the path of like killing those five people, I just wouldn't do anything. If it was already on the path of killing the one person, uh, I wouldn't do anything. I might not do anything either. We'll see. I think it also depends on like, like what more information are you gonna like? What if they're like, like the president of the UN is like one of those invisible people on the track, right? Then it's like you don't know, you don't know for sure, but you do know if you do. It's like it kind of goes back to like saving that kid who becomes a serial killer. It's like it's like it's a lot harder to pick, right? And also it depends on like how much I know or care about that one person, so. Um, I mean, this, this does offer an interesting parallel just between, like, the fact that, like, when you, like, just let five random people die, like, they're basically, like, invisible or non-existent to you anyway, because you don't really know or care about them. So they may as well just not exist. <coughs> so yeah. another variation, this is a, a phrase from the Quran. If you kill one man, it is as if you killed all of humanity. So the top track is one person, the bottom track is all of humanity. <laughs> <laughs> Which one would you do? If you're taking this phrase by like oh the by the Quran, like, yeah, like, literally, literally, like I, I'm more in the lines of like you're thinking like in this way too, right? Okay, so like one person versus all of humanity who may or may not be dead. Huh. I mean, there's there's different types of value, right? So like <coughs> maybe what the Quran was saying. I mean, I, I'm not I'm not Muslim, so I'm not gonna like assume what it says to that extent but my interpretation of it is like one person's life is as valuable as the lives of many others right and that's that's from just a value standpoint but from uh like biologically speaking one person can't repopulate the earth <laughs> so yeah no i just the, the one person has to take an l i'm sorry <laughs> yeah. that was really troll but like an like, actual other one that one was super cool. I didn't. I don't know what I expected out of that one. But this one is a little bit more thing. So, <coughs> oh my God, what is this? Yeah, decline. decline it. And then you have to restart the recording, right? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we just got interrupted by someone making a call. But okay, oh my. Okay. Uh, just, just message her. Message her like you're recording the podcast right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so now we're off the record, guys. Hey. hey! All right, we're back on the record now, boys. Okay. Okay. Hold up. We're still... Yeah, you see, this podcast recording. is very uh, raw and unfiltered. <laughs> raw and unfiltered. Yeah. Uh, she still calls you anyway. <laughs> sorry, I can't talk right now. Well, that's pretty good. Mm. Okay. That's your, that's your off take. Yeah, dude. We also had the guess <coughs> whatever ambulance was driving by earlier. Yeah, anyway, so here's one more. So, in exactly one year from now, you will be given the opportunity to nobly sacrifice yourself in order to save 10 people. However, to do so, you'll have to gain 110 pounds. Do you accept the challenge? <laughs> <laughs> 110 oh pounds! Bro, this in is, one year. This is literally so big brain. Dude, this is super size me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So you're noble. You're nobly sacrificing yourself. <laughs> so what you're saying is, I get to go as a hero, and I get to eat a ton of food before I die. I mean, sure. That's one it, way of thinking of it. It is one way of thinking. I mean, if you're right. getting 110 pounds within the span of the That's year, crazy. you're probably gonna die anyway. Yeah, <laughs> my army's gonna burst. If I don't have more. to pay. No, no, but like the thing is, I you mean, like you only gaining these 10, 110 pounds because you know you have the opportunity to sacrifice yourself. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Huh. But are, are, are people paying for my food? <laughs> I mean, does that change it? Yeah. 
I'm not. I'm not gonna. Pay so you to wouldn't sacrifice yourself if it came at a monetary loss to you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but like, like, okay, okay, this is kind of troll. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty troll. Not gonna lie. Okay, yeah. Either you would die first from gaining like, 110 pounds in a year, or I don't know. I mean, sure, I'd do it, but I'd probably die first. Like, I can't mm-hmm. guarantee that I'm gonna try. Yeah, I can't guarantee that I'd be like thick enough to sacrifice before. No, but what if, like, the condition to sacrificing yourself and saving them 100% is gaining 110 pounds? Like, you would save them 100% if you gain 110 pounds. How do you even gain 110 pounds? Well, for in some a people, year? that's like doubling your body weight. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, oh, that's okay. How do you do that? I mean, I try, but. Like... <coughs> I mean, there's inventive ways to do it. I feel like you could just, like, do random shit. Drink grease. A drink grease. <laughs> drink grease. <laughs> Have a baby. <laughs> But that's another person being sacrificed. <laughs> Your unborn baby being sacrificed. But I think that's a whole different morale. Yeah, I mean, that, that's way. also, like, yeah. how quickly can you gain 110 pounds? And is sacrificing another life for these 10 lives. Right. <coughs> I mean, the way it's worded is, like, I want to do, I want to do it. Yeah, but, like, but I don't think I physically can. Like, yeah. Like, I want to do it just based on the wording of the question, right? Like, because, like, you're putting the onus on yourself, and I think by the time, like, you die anyway, it doesn't really matter <laughs> yeah. how many pounds you gain. I just can't take the, the scenario that yeah. <laughs> Okay, what about this one? So, Coco is on the top track next to a lever. She understands sign language, but she does not understand the consequences of her actions. Do you sign for her to pull the lever or kill herself? So, Coco's a gorilla. A gorilla. Oh, it's a gorilla. I would value five people over one gorilla. So... So, so you would, so you would signal, you would signal for the gorilla to go kill itself. Probably. <laughs> what did you even know? What like? like it dies. It's so like it's instant death for her or Coco. Well, wait. Can Coco? Does Coco know how to commit suicide? Is it like? Does doesn't it, know the consequence of her actions. Oh, so. so she doesn't know she that just the train's it, coming for her. She's just like, I'm gonna pull the lever and it's just go to her or something. Like that. Yeah. Oh. I don't really. Yeah, I guess I don't value animals <coughs> because I value people. So <coughs> I would, I would, I would tell her to pull the lever on herself. Yeah. Oh, ooh. I mean, yeah, maybe. But then, let's say it wasn't an animal. What, what if it was like a deaf person who only understood sign language and was also mentally disabled to the point where they like they couldn't comprehend the consequences of that? Yes. Yeah. Would you tell that person to go kill themselves? Like, I don't. If it's not a gorilla and it's a person with the same mental capacity, would it, would it still be okay? I mean, it would be different. It would be different. I think. I, I think it's just like. I think it still runs yeah. along the same things that you guys set up because it's still one person versus five people. Yeah, in, in yeah. that case, I would still pull for the one person, but like for different reasons. Like there, there's yeah. just more, more of something on the other track. I guess I, I guess like the thing is enhancing your guilt, right? Because you're making yeah. it pull on yeah. themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think even with that scenario, like what you brought up, like with that mentally ill person who like can't really do anything, like I, I think that goes into the question of like, like if these other <coughs> five people were like healthy people, like what would most people end up doing? I guess like right. would they just end up killing the, choosing to kill that mentally ill person because like oh like he didn't have much potential anyway, and like. Even though, like, I was saying this stuff earlier, like, potential for why I would save the infant, like, I have, I still have a hard time, like, making that decision for a mentally ill person or, like, a deaf person, because, like, at some point, like, I feel like when you go across, when you continue to stick to that value super hard, you end up losing, like, your humanity or your empathy. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, I just don't know if it would be truly worth or, like, yeah, I don't really know. I feel like it would defeat the purpose, I guess. If I ended up going along the lines, so I feel like at some point, like, like yeah, I guess your principles have to be reflexible. Mm-hmm. Okay, one more troll one before we wrap up. So this one's called the anti trolley problem. So it's like the track is already you're already going on the track. It's going to create one person, but if you pull the lever, it will create five people. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait. So so it's one person being born or and created. So they're created for the existence of being killed <coughs> by the train. No no no, they're just oh, oh they're like straight up created. I mean 
Oh, so oh wait, you're right. They are created for the existence oh. of being killed by the train. Oh, oh, yeah. So it's already on the path of like. <coughs> wait, did I misread this? That's Perhaps I did. If they're being created, then it becomes more of a like overpopulation versus like. Okay, doing nothing will create five human beings. Pulling the lever will create only one, and then the train is still there. So. Okay, so they the the train will do its thing and they'll kill whoever yeah. is on the path. But you're creating them. Okay. For the sole purpose of being killed. Um, we have a guest. Oh. Here, join in on the last like ten minutes of this. <laughs> Take off your shoes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, pull up pull up the stool. Okay, so actually here, let's get do you know what the trolley problem is? Yes. Okay, what would you do? I have never made an actual decision on which one I'd pull or really kill because it's an ethical dilemma. It's a dilemma. That's the point, though. Uh, yeah, don't let us influence you because you yeah, haven't heard us yet. So, I what would you do? I didn't hear y'all's points. Can you see? <laughs> Okay, so there's two tracks and there's a train going towards the bottom track, which has five people tied to it. If you pull the lever, it will switch it to the top track and there's one person tied to it. But you have to deliberately pull the lever to switch it. What I've always chosen is to not interfere with anything and let it run over the five people because pulling it means that you are like choosing that that person's life is like less important than those five or I don't know. Like you're interfering even if it's for the greater good but like you're interfering. Okay, and so the problem we were discussing just now is the anti-trolley problem. <laughs> so basically what happens is if you let it do nothing, it will create five people on the bottom track and it will run over those people. Like people didn't exist there prior, but it will, they will just be instantaneously created just for the sole purpose of being killed. However, if you pull the thing, it'll only create one person and it'll kill one person. What would you do? <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> or how about, what, what does Alex and <coughs> think, how she's thinking? Uh, oh, okay, I was gonna go with, um, so it's the same way that like our, our farming industry works, right? You like make cows to kill them, or you make chickens to kill them. I mean, I feel like creating one thing to be killed is not necessarily better, but it uh, it'd be better than creating like five lives just for the purpose of murdering them. Um, that that's where that's where my answer would be. So I would I would flip the switch on that one too. Yeah, I would also flip the switch along the same lines of reasoning, because like one person like just showing up and dying is less bad than five people, because just five versus one. You're telling me there's no like natural course that the train would run. Like if you do nothing, the five people would show up and get ran over. Yeah. Also, if you do nothing, that also counts as an action. That's just. Oh yeah, yeah, do yeah. that spiel again. Oh okay. Just okay. choosing okay. to do nothing. Okay, so so um, Ben originally brought up that he'd like try and avoid the situation. I think it was. Yeah, yeah I, I brought was, it up. I brought um, it. Up. But I was saying that the avoidance of a situation is an action in itself. So you can either have an act of commission or an act of omission. The act of commission would be pulling the lever. The act of omission would be not pulling the lever. So either way, because you are a witness to what's happening, you're participating in this situation, and either way, you're, you're doing an action. Like, let's say that in the turtle pond, you saw a baby that was about to drown. Not doing anything would still be a type of action, because you, you acted against the thought of saving the baby. So you're, ta you're taking an action either way. So what would you do? I think in the second one... Speak loudly for the mic. <laughs> <laughs> in the anti-trolley problem, I feel like my inclination is to, to change my decision and run over the one person so that you save the five. They're not they're created. They're not going to be created. So you're not saving anyone. Exist. You're saving no one. Like either way, you're you're gonna let people die. It's just how many people will die. The one person died. Okay. That's hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'll do the same. Cause I basically summed up my thoughts. All right. So, how was your day? We had a surprise guest. Her name is Adele Caminade. Would you like to make a late introduction? Yeah. 
Um, I'm Adele Kaminati. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a junior studying marketing. I know Ben and Alex through I know Alex through Ben and Ben through FSA. And which Alex were you talking about? This one. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like... The hosts of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, and I just came to say hi. Any anything interesting you'd like to say? Because we're gonna start wrapping up soon. Oh. Any interesting stories? Um, as I was walking here, I think there was a fight that was about to break out by the gas station. Really? Oh. Yeah, and if I had my headphones, I wouldn't have noticed because, like, I was just tuned it out. But like, I heard yelling, and everyone's faces were like pointed towards the gas station, and there were these two like, um, adults that were like running towards the gas station. I think they were trying to break it up. So I did not see the end result of that. Damn. But mm-hmm. I don't know. They were yelling some. The, the people that were already there fighting were yelling some expletives. <laughs> Maybe that was why there was a siren going on. Yeah, probably. Oh, yeah, perhaps. Yeah. yeah, to link this all back together, like so, like 20 minutes ago, we had a, well, like a very loud siren. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so to start wrapping this up, how was it today? Um, This was a good talk. Uh, you know, these are things like the, the trolley problem, even though we did most of these like troll scenarios. <laughs> they're things that you don't usually think about, and it, I guess it's nice to bring them up and kind of express your own perspective on it. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed the podcast. Um, thanks for having me on. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, I think that these sort of mind experiments are a very interesting way to get to know other people. So. How was it for like the couple minutes you were on? Y'all have, y'all like led the discussion really well, and I enjoyed like that little philosophical. Oh, actually, one more bit before we wrap it up. So Adele was the person that asked me that softball question from earlier. What is your answer? A what softball? Like the question that was about like what habit of yours is like indicative of your personality. Oh yeah, did you talk about yours? Uh yeah, we talked about it all. So what is yours? Okay, well, this is something I've always wanted to ask people because I noticed that whenever I'm looking at, like, lists on, like, if you're just going through a list on your phone and you have to, like, choose something, I tend to start from the bottom. So I like to scroll through the whole entire list, get a glimpse of everything, and then start from the bottom to, like, actually, like, look at the options. And I was wondering why I did that, and I tried to, like, link it back to maybe, like, a personality trait of mine and realize that I like to be able to like, zoom out of situations and like see things from like an out, like an overall perspective because maybe that's maybe it points to why I like to control things and like big have, <laughs> have things all in my line of sight. So yeah, that's why I asked you the question. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. All right. So yeah. Ooh, we're wrapping up now, and this was Nuanced Nonsense. We are not experts on anything. We just love talking. And before we end, would you guys like to shout anything out? Uh, not really. I. You already plugged this music. Right? You already plugged yeah, this music? Think, yeah. Is there anything you'd like to plug? Stream Super M. Stream Super M? What is Super M? Super M is a K-pop group that just debuted, <laughs> mm. oh, um, okay. but it's made up of like existing K-pop idols. <coughs> They're great. So it's a super group. Yeah, it's like a super group. What does streaming mean? Um, play their music on Spotify so they can win awards. Mm. And get views! Oh, okay. All right. You're a real fan. Damn, dude. Yeah. Okay. And? Yeah, that's the newest nonsense. Signing out. <laughs>